Welcome to Real Physics. Is the standard solar model worse than astrology? I know that sounds a little bit provocative, but it's not that I am saying that, it's the standard wisdom that brings out that really ridiculous explanation. But to give a little bit of context, I have made a series of videos about the liquid metallic hydrogen model developed by Pierre-Marie Robitaille as an alternative to this standard solar model. And this is just a little clip on a one of these problems of the standard solar model. Now I have made a video about these spectacular solar eruptions, the coronal mass ejections, but let's now focus on one aspect and just take a look at one of these spectacular eruptions. It's in June 2011. You see that? Wow! You see that? Incredible velocity material is ejected hundreds of thousands of kilometers into the solar atmosphere and That begs the question. What about the energy? How much energy do you need for that? Huge ejection and if you look up then the, the literature and Wikipedia Wikipedia is always ready to rehash mainstream science one of the theories is magnetic reconnection and they say a current problem in plasma physics <laughs> is fast uh, magnetic reconnection. Solar flares, for example, proceed 13 to 14 orders of magnitude faster than a naive calculation would suggest. And <laughs> the first time I read this, I thought, okay, a factor of 13 or 14, that's not a little, that's quite a bit, a factor of 14. And then I realized, oh, it's 13 orders of magnitude. It's incredible. I mean, if you compare that to the solar system, the gravitational pull of the outermost planet of Neptune would be 10 orders of magnitude less than the gravitational pull of the Earth. So we're talking really of a hilarious relation. And so, I mean, the standard model can now assume all kinds of favorable coincidences and all kinds of circumstances and put in a load of free parameters but and you can improve that 13 orders of magnitude of course a little bit some orders of magnitude but i mean it's going to be an uphill battle if you start 1000 times worse than astrology and another problem related to these coral and mass ejections ah uh, here is some other comment of the renowned astrophysicist harold Sirin. And he said the chromosphere is the least well understood layer of the sun's atmosphere. Part of the problem is that it is so dynamic and transient. At this height, an ill-defined magnetic field dominates the gas and determines the structures. Since we do not know the physical mechanisms, it is impossible to produce a realistic model. He is complaining here that these magnetic reconnection and these magnetic fields have become a wild card for explaining everything. And he said, no, it's not even possible to make a quantitative model. And well, I think a little ironic is this, the chromosphere, something we can observe very well, is the least well understood layer of the sun's model. Now, the thing you can look best at it is the worst understood. I think that indicates already a problem of the model. However, Let's say the basic problem is, if you look at the sun, you see a surface, all visual evidence points to a distinct surface and the standard model has to deny, has to say this surface is only illusionary and there's lots of evidence that this is a real surface. Just look at this sunquake, that's also a coronal mass ejection and what you see is just a propagating wave like ripples in a pond. That's what you see. And time ago I asked a researcher from Stanford University, isn't this obvious evidence for a liquid surface or for a real surface? And he said, no, no, no. This example is actually acoustic waves excited by a flare. The waves propagate into the interior. You don't see that where the sound speed is much higher, could be, than at the surface, the waves are refracted back toward the surface, place where the density drops a bit below the visible photosphere, always shifting the arguments to the regions where you don't look at, where they are reflected back to the interior. Okay, I mean, I admit you can try to explain this still in the standard solar model, but it looks very contrived to me. All this, however, is part of helioseismology. I want to mention here also a problem pointed out by Pierre-Marie Robitaille. If you deny a real surface of the sun, you must invoke some process that create 
this illusion of an optical surface. At the same time, you observe also that the Sun oscillates and normally oscillations are only possible at a rigid body. So you would also think about a solid surface if you look at the helioseismology data, but then you need a mechanical model that creates that illusionary surface that in a gaseous model of the sun, of course, is not there. So we have another miraculous coincidence here. The illusionary surface of the optical observations would correspond magically to that illusionary surface of the mechanical model. Again, something very strange in the standard model. There are lots of other details. I just wanted to mention this rather funny, almost ridiculous, trying to explain it with known physics, if you start out from the wrong model. I have covered in more detail an overview of the liquid metallic hydrogen model in this book, The Liquid Sun. This is the German version and you can go to still more detail and look up Rabitai's Papers in Progress of Physics and also a very good YouTube channel, Sky Scholar, run by Rabitai, where he explains in great detail many of these contradictory phenomena that point to the validity of the liquid metallic hydrogen model. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental questions of physics, subscribe to this channel.